Hello and welcome, my name is Damien De Silva from Air Inspect and today's video is a pre-flight check and explanation of the icons for the GoFly app and the DJI Air 3. Now this video can be used on basically any DJI drone. Now droning is a heck of a lot of fun and it's extremely tempting to unbox your drone and take it out for its first flight straight away. However, there are a few things you need to know prior to taking off. Here are a couple of basic rules. In Australia, did you know that you are not allowed to fly your drone amongst anybody else unless you have the appropriate paperwork? If people are present, the drone must be flying at least a minimum of 30 meters away. Even though this drone has the capability of flying up to two kilometers away from its home point, that you can only fly the drone a maximum ceiling height of 120 meters or 400 feet, and if flown solo, must be only flown in direct line of sight. If your drone weighs more than 250 grams, which this one certainly does, you cannot fly within 5.5 kilometers any major airport or helipad. Now, there will be an alert that comes from your RC remote if you are within these zones. Now, these were just a few basic rules and regulations set out in Australia. In Australia, we follow the rules and regulations set out by the Civil Aviation and Safety Authority, or CASA for short. Click on the link below to get a better understanding of your drone and where, and where you can or cannot fly your drone. Now, let's get started. Let's take a look at the Fly app and some of its features. On the right-hand side, you'll see three dots. These three dots are for the settings. The first tab that we'll come to is the safety, our safety tab. And as you'll notice, the first area is the obstacle avoidance. So basically, if a drone encounters an obstacle, there are three ways that it can react within the, I uh, guess, within the, the, to the obstacle. First would be bypass, break and off bypass means that the drone will actually try to find its optimal round around the obstacle, break, the drone will stop and wait for your instructions and off, which I highly do not recommend unless you are an expert, is the drone will just keep flying straight um, and there will not be any alerts that sound. Um, this also is activated when in sports mode. In normal and cine, you have the features of bypass and brake. Further down the tab, you'll come across return to the advanced return to home options. So there are two options, optimal and presets. The difference between the two is in optimal, if you're flying at a certain height, i.e. 35 meters, the drone will start its return at that height and I use the obstacle avoidance action to avoid obstacles to come home, where in preset, the drone will stop its current uh, height, say again, 35 square meters, 35 meters, it will rise up to 65 meters and then return to home. My preference is the optimal feature, especially I, I like this just in case the battery life is low you're not wasting time, it's returned to home pretty much immediately. A little bit further down, you come across the update to home point. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the maximum height in Australia is 120 meters. I have mine set at 110, and the maximum distance I have that the drone will fly is 650 meters. Um, I find this, for line of sight, as I mentioned before, at night, 650 meters, I can still see the light flashing, but during the day, I only use line of sight. So the next icon along is the satellites. Now, as you can see, I'm indoors, so the signal is extremely weak and there are no satellites connected. You should have a minimum of 10 satellites. This helps update the return to home functions as well as any, as where you the return to home, the your RC remote control of the location of that, the current home point and where your drone is situated. The more satellites, the stronger the signal. This also helps if 
in emergencies, the drone lands or crashes, this will help you locate your drone because it will record the last known location of your drone before the, the failure. The next icon is the obstacle avoidance. Currently it's inactive and you can see it's in red because it's still on the ground. When the drone does take off, the color will change and will only be red if an obstacle, be, obstacle becomes present. One last thing with the obstacle avoidance, as I mentioned earlier, when in sports mode, this is inactive. So keep it in, if you're first time flyer, I recommend keep it in cine or normal and the obstacle avoidance will stay active. The next icon along is the RC signal. As you can see, the signal between the drone and the RC remote is strong. The further away the drone moves from the remote, uh, the lower the signal gets, especially if there's obstacles in the way. The signal will go from uh, a white to a yellow and then a possible red, and which you will try to avoid. It may crash or the at, at best it will return to home because of loss of signal. Okay, the next one, the next icon across is the battery life. Uh, a couple of things, a couple of uh, options are given here until return to home, until forced landing, or until battery is depleted. Now, because the battery, the drone is currently stationary and not in flight, these are all reading zero, but you can still see that there is still 79% left on the current drone. I recommend keeping an eye on this uh, while in flight in high wind or low wind or if the battery life, if it's cold outside, you'll notice that the battery will deplete a lot quicker than on a normal sunny day. The next icon along is the, uh, well, currently it says take off with caution, no GPS. Normally this would say in a permitted zone, it was to say take off permitted, but because I'm indoors, there is no satellite signal, it's telling me to take off with caution. If you click on it, it gives you a flight checklist. So basically it gives you a brief rundown on the current information about return to home, maximum altitude, and it also tells you your SD card and internal storage, what is available. And as you can see, the avoidance, uh, aircraft avoidance is not active and the GPS is extremely weak because I'm indoors. The next icon across is the current mode your drone is in. As you can see, it's currently in normal mode. If we move it across, changes to cine or far side speed mode. The next icon across is the waypoint mission icon. Now I'm not gonna get into this particular icon right now. Um, but basically it is designed for pre-planned flights, especially great to be used if you need to use the same flight pattern over and over again. I will go into this in more detail in the next video, in another video. Underneath that, you have the takeoff button, or if it's in flight, the landing button, or it can also be used as return to home. It just depends on what the current usage of the drone is at the time. The next icon is your maps. Unfortunately, because I'm indoors, the GPS hasn't connected to my location, but you can still click on it, get a slightly bigger window, click on it again, and it expands out to the wall map. If it had satellites, it will locate your current orientation and location. Um, this is also a handy feature because you can also, if you lose your drone um, and you still have signal, you can click on find my drone and your drone will start flashing and beeping in its current location. This will also give its current last location to you on the map. I forgot to mention while in map mode, you also want to double check that your home point is active in its current location. 
Again, this is used when you are flying and you want to make sure your drone returns back to its home point and not another kilometer away where you originally started if you're using the active track feature. You can also turn this map into a compass by clicking this little icon here. Normally this again would be your home point as well as your drone, as well as your RC remote control will be showing up in this view. But like I said, I'm sorry, I'm indoors. And if you want to minimize that and turn it back to an icon, just click on it like that to the left hand side. In compass, you can also change the center point being either the drone, the RCU controller, or your home point being the center point. This also gives you the orientation of where your, which, or sorry, the direction that your drone is currently facing in relation to you. Um, this also is very handy if you are in bush or have lost sight of your drone, uh, it'll bring you back to home uh, a lot easier. The last two icons we're gonna to touch on in this video is the height and distance. Uh, so basically, again, the height from the ground and the distance from the current RC controller or boing point, depending on how it's been set up and the speed they're moving up in vertically or horizontally. Thank you again for joining me and don't forget to subscribe to the Air Inspect channel for more great content. Now, my next video will be on the Mini 4 Pro. Uh, until then, have a wonderful day, evening or night. My name's Damien De Silva for Air Inspect. I look forward to seeing you. Take care.